Yes, this is the last session of our JNCI series, and uh, we are going to cover up uh, last few points. So, exactly. This uh, firewall filter concepts and uh, Unicast reverse path forwarding. So I have implemented already this on uh, on my EVNG. Uh, we will uh, elaborate on this. We will have one more uh, implementation of that. First, I'll walk you through what is the concept of uh, firewall filter uh, that you already know from the Cisco's point of view as ACL. Right? So here we will discuss it uh, from a uh, Juniper point of view. As you can see in the diagram, uh, from the outside or from the untrust network, if we have any routing device or which is also providing a security services, like uh, router also, Cisco routers also provide ACL in, and some basic form of firewalling. Similarly, VMX router or uh, or the Juniper routers can also provide a minimum form of, form of firewalling with the help of firewall filters. Okay. So it's a kind of uh, firewall filter or fire, firewall, but it is a, not a stateful, rather it is stateless. So uh, in case of stateful, we have bidirectional uh, communication of permit and uh, deny statements. In stateless, we have to explicitly allow the traffic in the direction in both the directions right? and furthermore it keeps or stateful firewall keeps the information about the flow or you can say the stateful firewall is like a flow based firewall whereas stateless firewall is a packet based firewall right? building blocks are similar as we have seen in the routing policy we have name under that we have terms uh, and in the terms we have from and then statement in from statement, we have match criteria, and in the then statement, we have the options like uh, accept the traffic or reject the traffic. And uh, if first term doesn't match, then it goes to the second terms. If that doesn't match, then we have uh, a default action, which, which may be a discard, or we can have explicitly the options as different. So the match criteria is based on uh, different aspects like. IP addresses, source or address or destination address. Uh, we can have port numbers there. We can have protocol number. So I have kept a minimal uh, scenario here. Like uh, in our last scenario, we have uh, four Cisco router connected with this VMX router and they have formed this uh, OSPF, right? So the traffic from uh, one loopback interface to the another loopback interface from 3.3.3 to 5.5.5 all is possible because we have OSPF connectivity. As uh, as we have already seen, we can check this. Right. So let's try 3.3.3 looping to uh, 4.4.4. Let's take access of R3. This is R2, this is R3, we'll use extended ping with the source option. As we can see, connectivity is there, and that's not uh, any magical thing. We already know it's using a routing table in the back end, and this routing table, a rib or fib, we can see uh, we do have a route for 4.4.4 available. Right? Uh, likewise, we can connect with 5.5.5. We can connect with 2.2.2. But in case of 2.2.2, I have implemented uh, one firewall filter. So maybe that's dropping the traffic because the two traffic is easily going toward it, but the return traffic, it's get blocked. And why? 
because 2.2 is blocking the traffic. Let's check on R2 router. One second. So you can see here. Uh, it's mentioned unreachable, 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 right? Why? Because I have implemented one firewall filter on the interface GE000 and the configuration I have already copied on the PPT slides here. Right? So let me show you this on the VMX router first. Under uh, configuration, right? Uh, firewall. I have this uh, filter based on IPv4 name. Under this, we have term first term as block and the second term as accept all. In the first term, we are specifying the from state. If the source address is 2.2.2.2, which is a loopback interface of uh, R2, then we are going to reject it. Decide reject, we have discard option also. But from the word itself, what do you understand? What's the difference between reject and discard? In, in case of reject, you get a response on R2 like unreachable. But if you keep it uh, discard, you will get dots here. It means request timed out. Okay? It means we are not getting a proper ICMP type 3 here. Right? The, means our firewall or our router is not responding us with the clear sign that we are discarded. We are we, we are stopping this. Okay, it's just discarding the message. Whereas in the reject, we get the proper ICMP type T message that is destination host unreachable. Uh, so we will try one more uh, firewall filter on this interface, and that time we will keep it uh, discard instead of reject. Uh, beside 2.2.2, rest all traffic will be accepted. So it means if I try from R2 to 5.5.5, you .5 should not be objected. Let's, let's try without keeping the source. It means we will take the source as 192.168.20.2, which is a source IP address. This time we are able to get the reply. But if we try from 2.2.2, we are not getting the reply. I hope this is very simple implementation of firewall, right? And this is just access list, but it's of no use unless and until we, we apply it somewhere, right? So where we have to apply it under interface G000. So let's try. Show configuration interface G000. So you can see here, we have filter, yes. the command goes like this, set interface G00, unit 0, family, inet filter, and after that, we have to specify the direction 
inbound or outbound so in cisco terms we say inbound outbound and in cisco terms it is fall, first of all we have to give the uh, acl number or acl name and after that we give inbound outbound but here we have to give input or output beforehand and then we have to specify the name of the firewall firewall filter okay this address family and all that 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 is already there right only this thing we have changed okay so this this is the additional thing that we have to add uh, in order to make it ac uh, ap applicable on the interface clear guys any doubt in understanding this so let's try we will implement similar scenario from R3, uh, 3.3.3 uh, should not uh, go to 5.5.5. Rest for rest all uh, connection, it should be allowed. So how we can do that using this uh, configuration? Let's try. So first of all, we we'll, should be in the configuration mode. So I'm, I'm in the configuration mode. Next, we have to go into uh, firewall family okay. so let's uh, let's go to the firewall family so add it firewall family on ipv4 okay. and then we can set a filter okay. so first filter i kept as lan filter let's keep the another one as LAN 2 or let's keep it LAN 3 because we are going to do it for router 3. So LAN 3 hyphen filter. Okay. Then we have to specify the term. Right? So first we'll go with the block term. So term block. And this is just a name under this we have to specify prompt statement and then we will specify the then statement right so let's first of all specify prompt statement and we are going with only one particular address source address as 2.2.2. not 2. Dot. in case of router 3 we have 3.3.3.3 .3 .3 right slash 32. So this is source address. Let's repeat this for destination address. Pi dot pi dot pi dot pi slash 32. Right. So in the from statement, I kept two things. Now let's go for the then statement. And last time we kept reject, and this time we will create with the discard. Okay. Okay. And for the rest of the traffic, we are going to allow. So for that, we should have accept uh, term. Right. So let's go for the next term. So we have block term, let's create a accept all. We can give any name, but let's go with this name. Right. And accept all. We are not keeping from statement here, we are just keeping then statement. So it's going to capture everything. So if I show here. So we have LAN filter, we have LAN3 filter. So let's okay. so show filter LAN3. So we do have a block statement where source and destination addresses are matched. And uh, then statement we have discard and in the in the second term accept all we have accept. Right? Now we have to apply this where it should be applied according to topology 
this should be applied on GE001. So let's go with GE001. First of all, I'll go to the top of the hierarchy. Then we'll go to edit, interface GE001.0. Set family inet filter and then we have to specify directions. So again, this traffic is coming from router 3, right? And it's going to router 5. If we apply it on 003, then we have to apply it output. But here we are applying it input because traffic is coming toward VMX router. We'll say input and then we have to specify the name of the filter which is uh, LAN3 filter or we should get a hint here like LAN3 filter right we'll go to the top of the hierarchy you see show I compare you can see here so whatever changes we are made, making here on interface GE001 is visible. Furthermore, whatever changes we made on LAN3 is also visible. Let's commit this. And let's try from R3. We'll uh, go to the privilege mode so we can have extended ping. Let's ping to 5.5.5.5 with the source 3.3.3.3. So we should get a request timed out because even ICMP type 3 will also be not delivered to us from VMX router right? because we have a discard statement there. But if you go for any other ping like directly trying to ping from 192.168.30.3 from here right then this uh, filter will not be applicable if you try to ping to some other IP address like 4.4.4.4 right there also this filter is not applicable okay so this is like a very basic and minimum form of firewall filter we have applied on this hope this clear the point how we can utilize this. Is it clear, guys? Any doubt? Ganesh, Yogesh, Akshay. Okay. Next, uh, other concept that we have to understand is uh, unicast RPF or unicast reverse path forwarding, right? So, I, have, I don't have much application on, on this small scenario here, but it could be useful in the big environment where security is a concern, then we can use this RPF. So I ran a command, show config, configuration match RPF display set. Right? We can, I already applied this, so we can again rerun that command here. Show configuration match rpf for reverse path or uh, reverse path uh, forwarding right so i have applied this on ge001 ge001 is this interface right and uh, we have to apply it under ipv4 means finally inet so what is the benefit of applying this RPF check argument on this interface? So if anyone try to spoof, suppose this is a partner network, suppose this R3 is furthermore connected with or uh, this link itself is connected to the business partner of our company, right? And uh, we should have a uh, cross check there, whatever networks are connected 
off of this link off of this ge001 link okay only those routes should send a packet toward us if any unknown route sends if any unknown uh, source network or source address is shooting a packet toward our vmx router that should get blocked by default any router is looking at the destination address or source address it's a basic question guys when someone asks you even in in a real world also if someone asks you uh, where is the railway station or where is a hospital so you don't ask in return who are you if you know the answer you will just say yes i know and you will say since uh, you will give the information about the destination right similarly router also route on the basis of destination correct akshay so we don't normally look at the source address but in case of reverse path forwarding we keep track of the of the sources also and if those sources source addresses are there in the routing table connected to this interface then only it will be entertained otherwise it will be blocked that is the concept of unicast reverse forwarding uh, you know uh, in the ddos attacks uh, the the packet request is sent on behalf of a network suppose our r2 is is uh, is very important device okay and r3 send a request on behalf of r2 okay to any server that server return back the traffic to r2 but actually the traffic is generated from the r3 this is possible if we change the source address or if we spoof the source address by some kind of packet crafting from uh, kali linux right so in order to avoid that thing we have to apply this unicast reverse path forwarding is it clear guys that is the last point of our discussion okay so we will just walk through this uh, syllabus right uh, and uh, most of the things we have covered up right uh, but still if you have any doubts specifically you can ask me or else we can just walk through this sub, uh, all the topics now so networking fundamental uh, so here we have uh, very basic questionnaires right uh, on the on the ipv4 ipv6 so you can expect some questions related to uh, subnettings also in this case right and uh, uh, the longest match routing so some uh, jumbling questions which uh, which gives you a uh, multiple options right so let's con consider there will be a scenario uh, with slash 24 with the slash uh, slash uh, 16 right and slash uh, you have a default route so obviously longest match prefix means slash 24 slash 16 and default route so that slash 24 will be applicable for that right so uh, like this the different uh, uh, objective questions will arise on this right connection oriented connection less means tcp udp related questionnaires will arise right? Uh, Juno is fundamental software architecture uh, control and forwarding planes. Right? So this also we have discussed in our past sessions. Right? So control plane is about like a uh, management as, as well as the routing. Uh, right. So that architecture we have already seen and uh, forwarding plane is like a PFE packet forwarding engine. Right. So routing engine and packet forwarding engine, they are connected with the control plane and forwarding plane. So forwarding plane is mapped with the packet forwarding engine and control plane is mapped with the routing engine. So your exception traffic goes to the routing engine, whereas transit traffic is passes through the packet forwarding engine. As far as speed is concerned, we need a millions of packets per second speed on the transit traffic, right? exception traffic depends on the scenario if it is a telnet or if it is ssh right we don't want speed here we just want the commands to be delivered to the device user interfaces we have seen the different mode functionality and the navigation help of the cli right we do have seen the jweb also we have implemented nat we have implemented dhcp via jweb but this jweb we have utilized 
VSRX device, which can easily provide this JFM, right? For uh, for uh, router and switches, we do require a a license copy of this, but uh, I, I have used the minimum version, so VSRX is sufficient enough for this. Then we have seen the active and candidate configuration also, and we compared it with the Cisco routers. In case of Cisco router, we have running configuration and the startup configurations. So running configuration is just like active configuration and stand startup configuration is like a candidate configuration. But there is a basic difference of the behavior of startup configuration. Right? Uh, so here candidate configuration is not directly applicable or running in the RAM. We have to use a commit command for this purpose. Right? We can have a saving configuration options also, right? and we can have a rescue configuration options. Right? So factory default state, we can take it back to the factory default state. We have a command load factory default. Uh, user accounts, login classes, right? so all these basic things we have seen in our past discussion. Uh, operational monitoring maintenance that also we have seen show commands, different monitor commands, right? Uh, which gives the statistics of the interfaces, errors. Root password recovery, I have not shown you, but this is also possible. Uh, in, and not in this series, but uh, possible, I'll make a document and upload in the Google Drive, Google Drive, which I shared with you. So I'm working on the document. Once I get it uh, done with this, so I'll share those commands. Traffic forwarding concepts in the routing fun fundamental, we have seen a routing table, the command like show route, right? routing tables versus forwarding tables. Forwarding table gives you more details like the interface information as well. Route preference, which is termed as administrative distance in Cisco routers. Routing instance, one of them is like a VRF. Static routings we have seen in the dynamic routing, we have seen the OSPF routing protocol. After that, in the last few sessions, we have seen routing policies, export and import of this. Uh, so I shown you in the demo on the export, but we can do it with the import also if we implement BGP uh, routing protocol, right, which is not in the scope, but in future, maybe if we work on JNCIS or JNCIP, we'll work on that. Right? Uh, then uh, firewall filter in today's sessions, we have seen that and uh, at last Unicast reverse path for it. Hope this training is helpful in clearing your uh, JNCI exam. The best for your uh, future career. If you have any question, guys, uh, please ask. Okay, Yogesh, uh, your arguments. Is, so I'm working on those documents. Once it is finalized, then I'll upload it uh, in the PDF format. So sure, I'll, I'll upload that. And you, most of you are connected with me on the LinkedIn. If you want, uh, you can connect with me. Same name if you search. You can get access on the LinkedIn to my profile. And uh, uh, in the future, also, you'll be connected. Uh, Ganesh, uh, this exam uh, is like a uh, for one second. Um, uh, so I'm done with the with the uh, topics and rest of the discussion we will we will do right now.